everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets and thank you so much for tuning in. Here on my YouTube channel, I post a variety of different budgeting related videos that is usually on Mondays, Wednesdays, and then again on Fridays. So if that is content that sounds like something that you may be interested in, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified for when I post new videos. It really, really helps out my channel. So anyways, today I am going to be filming my June paycheck number two budget. So this is the paycheck that I believe I get on June the 17th. And this has to last me from June the 17th up until June the 30th. So this is actually like the first time that like one of these bi-weekly budgets actually ends at the end of the month, which is just really cool for July, which you guys will see when I do my July budget. But yeah, I just do these videos basically to make sure my account does not go negative. I was used to doing a monthly budget. So when I had originally started my channel back in July of 2021 even though I was paid weekly I budgeted monthly using a rollover of around $1,500 but then when I ended up switching jobs back in March I had to spend that rollover and also going for two weeks without a paycheck compared to going getting a paycheck every single week was a big adjustment for me so I needed to do these videos again basically just to make sure that my account did not go negative so that is what I am doing today so let's get started so the first thing that I always do is I list out my income. And again, if anybody might be new, I am a salaried employee. I get the same paycheck every month, but every other week I get a different amount. And that's because one check gets insurance taken out of it and one check doesn't. So this is actually the check that I don't have insurance taken out of. So that means that my income for the second paycheck of June is $1,894. Um, the next thing I do is I list out other. So other for me is sort of just like a catch-all category in case I have any uh, other extra random income. So like, for example, at one of the bridal showers that I went to, I actually won a gift card. So if for some reason that had a, not have been a gift card, if that had have been cash, I would have included that in that other section. But um, yeah, that's sort of what I do here because I don't really have any other source of income. I technically do now though, because I am a YouTube partner. Again, if you guys saw my May budget closeout video, which would have gone up last Saturday, you would have seen that I got my first check from YouTube, which was really, really cool it ended up making it so that I was actually able to pay off my one of my credit cards in the month of May compared to having to wait until June to do it which was really awesome but yeah that was a really long-winded explanation to say that no <laughs> there is no other income that I'm expecting this month that is zero dollars anyways my total then for income for the month I am expecting for no sorry not the month the paycheck is one thousand eight hundred and ninety four dollars now onto my fixed expenses. So again, my fixed expenses are not necessarily fixed in the sense of like, they're not the same amount every single month. They're just fixed because I consider them bills or I consider them mandatory. So for example, my sinking funds and like saving for the weddings that I'm attending aren't necessarily, um, they're, I take that back, they're not bills. I just consider them necessary savings, which is why I put them under fixed. So in terms of my rent, um, what I do every paycheck is I save half of my rent. So instead of, 12 the full having to pay the full twelve hundred dollars in one check i split half of it so this check i'm saving six hundred dollars which again is half of my rent um the next bill that i have during this pay period is my car insurance and my car insurance is one hundred and twenty dollars the next bill that i have during this time is my netflix and i haven't canceled netflix although Honestly, I'm pretty sure that by this point I'll I'll, I'll cancel Netflix because I really haven't been using it. But I've said that for a long time and I haven't done it yet. But I really hope that by this time I actually go through with it and cancel it because I've been really like bad when it comes to this. But anyways, it's it is what it is. Anyways, Netflix ends up costing me twelve dollars a month though. Um, Tangerine, okay. So this is a little bit confusing because what I'm actually going to put here for my Tangerine credit card is $225. Now, the reason why I'm doing it that way is because when you guys saw my original budget set up here for June, I put my credit card minimums for $800. And what I was planning to do with that $800 was I was going to put $575 towards my Scotiabank credit card. That credit card was due on the 15th. So that would have been part of paycheck number one. And then my Tangerine credit card, which at the time was not my main priority for my debt snowball, that card would have been getting um, $225, which was essentially the minimum payment when I initially started paying off this card back in July. However, I actually paid off this card, this $575, 
in May. So the $575 that I was initially planning to budget to pay on the 7th, or not the 17th, the 15th to my Scotiabank credit card, I don't need to pay that money anymore. So I've obviously like, I've canceled that um, transaction because there's no money on that card. That balance is now $0. So that $575, what I'm actually doing is I'm putting that towards my Tangerine credit card, but it's not part of this paycheck money, if that makes sense. It's part of the money that I had from paycheck number one, because if I put the $575 here, I would ultimately end up going over budget, but then I would be like $575 under budget for this paycheck. So it's a little bit confusing, but ultimately what it means is that with the money that I get paid on the 17th, $225 of that money is going to be going towards my Tangerine credit card. The remaining money, because I'm going to be actually putting a total of $800 towards my Tangerine credit card, that remaining $575 actually comes from paycheck number one. So I hope I explained that well. That was honestly very confusing to me. So honestly, if I didn't explain that well and you guys have questions, please let me know. But basically what I have done is I have adjusted the automatic amount to be withdrawn on a monthly basis for this Tangerine card to be $800. But for this specific month, I'm not doing $800 on this check. I'm doing $575 from one check and $570 and $225 from the other. So yeah. Anyways, sorry, again, that was very long winded, but I hope that made sense. <laughs> All right, next I have my phone bill and my phone bill is $59 every month. And then my sinking funds. So my sinking funds, I'm actually doing quite a bit of money in my sinking funds this month. If you guys watched my sinking fund video from May, you'll know that I completely depleted my gift sinking fund in order to buy a really, or to pay for a very expensive and nice present for my mom for Mother's Day. So I actually, but I actually have in this month, like in the month of June, two birthdays and then Father's Day presents for two people. So I really need money for my gift sinking fund. So instead of doing my normal $250, I'm actually going to be doing $400 towards my sinking funds. And and basically that is just in gifts. I have decided though that I'm going to keep track of all this like, extra spending in gifts because my overall goal for the year is I want to spend no more than $1,800 for the year on gifts. So that means $150 per week month on like gifts sinking funds and then $100 per week month on Christmas. So again if you take 100 times 12 that's $1,200 and then if you times 50 times 12 that is $600. So again 1200 plus 600 is 1800. So the fact that I'm over stuffing gifts right now means that I have to adjust something else because I am that was another really big goal of mine like my one main goal is that I really want to try to get out of credit card debt by the end of the year and another main goal of mine is I really want to try to limit my gift spending not excessively because I still think gifts is very gifts are very important they're like a big part of my family and I'm not mad about that but I just want to be a lot more intentional with the purchases that I've made and honestly I did really well in May except for that one gift for my mom so I just I want to continue that momentum going forward with the other gifts that I had bought in the month of May but anyways that all being said $400 for sinking funds um, finally, I have a category called weddings. Um, no, I am not engaged. <laughs> um, I am, and I'm actually not in the weddings. I'm just attending two weddings this summer and they are quite expensive. So what I've been doing for the past two months, so in April and May, and then also in June, I've been putting $200 per month aside for these weddings. I'm not doing this in cash. Um, I have a savings account for it. Um, so that's actually what I'm doing for that, just so that I have a bit more money so that I can pay for like gifts. Like the, the, each of the weddings is having multiple showers and then also there's like the actual wedding gift and then the hotel just all the costs associated with going to a wedding ends up being very expensive so that's why I'm saving that money anyways my total then for my fixed expenses if you add all of that up comes to a total of $1,616 all right, now onto my variable expenses. So again, if you guys have never watched my videos before, um, you might not know this, but I am not a cash budgeter. <laughs> I use my debit card for everything. So what my variable expenses would be would normally be what people use for cash envelopes. But again, I don't use cash envelopes for anything. So I just budget and I try to my best to keep to these amounts. So my first variable expense category I have is groceries. So for this two week period, I am budgeting $120 for groceries, which is $60 per week. 
Um, next I have dining out and dining out I am budgeting $80 which I know is a lot at $40 a week but I have upped my dining out budget just for the summer months to just give myself a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to that stuff because I have really limited myself when it comes to dining out. I know it might not seem like it but if you add up all my dining out purchases from the last year I think that's probably what I used to spend in like two months. So honestly I'm very happy with this dining out budget even though again I know for some people it might seem like a lot. Um, next I have gas and gas I only budget $40. Gas is super high where I live it's over $2 a liter but I don't really drive my car very much anymore and if I can walk I do and I live in a place that's like semi walkable <laughs> not fully but semi so like if I can walk to the grocery store and it's 30 minutes away I'm gonna walk to the grocery store unless it's like a terrible day outside so yeah gas I budget $40 and honestly I usually have um, have only been spending about $40 per month but I do budget $40 per pay check just in case I have to put more gas in my car. Um, finally, I have miscellaneous and miscellaneous for this paycheck. I'm only doing $40. That's $20 per week. I actually might end up getting my nails done during this pay period, but I actually budgeted that from paycheck number one money. So I'll just carry that over into paycheck number two. Again, it doesn't really matter for me because it's not like I zero out my budgets based on these paychecks. I just do it so that I make sure that my account doesn't go negative. So again, if, and I, if I saw like a negative $400 here, I'd be like, okay, shoot. I have to reevaluate something and maybe not do my sinking funds, for example. So, but truthfully, when I do like my extra payments to debt and everything, I do that at the end of June. So after I've done both of my paychecks, um, budget closeouts, then I close out the entire month of June. And that's when I actually do like my actual like money moves, I guess. So yeah. Anyways, now let's do my, oh, sorry, I completely forgot my total. My total variable expenses for the two week period ends up being $280. Sorry, you guys, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, but now I can, now I can end this video and I can do my balance. So um, I just bring down first my income. So my income estimated is $1,894. Of course, that's from up here. So I've got $1,894. Then I have my fixed expenses. So $1,616. So minus $1,616. And then I minus my variable expenses, which is $280. So minus $280. So that actually leaves me with negative $2. I have to grab my red pen, which is fine because again, that is, I mean, negative $2 is, I don't want to ever be negative when I do these budgets, but it is actually okay because I do have a buffer in my account of around $500. And as I mentioned before, when I close up my June paycheck number one, I estimated to have around $82 left at the end of that paycheck. And I would actually carry that $82 into this paycheck. So like technically, even if I didn't have a buffer on June the 17th, when I get paid for the first time, if I had started with zero and I spent all of this money, I would have $82 in my account carried over from my June paycheck number one. So that $2 negative amount is not a big deal. But um, yeah, I do have a buffer in my account. So that $2 is, is, is very much totally okay. <laughs> but Anyways, that is it for today. Thank you again, you guys, so much for tuning in. Again, my name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets. Um, my next video should actually be up on Monday and that's actually going to be my July monthly budget setup. And that's because next Monday when you would normally see like my weekly check-in, this coming weekend is actually Father's Day weekend. So I'm gonna be at my parents' house. So I'm giving myself a few extra days to film that video, which is why you're seeing my July monthly budget a couple days early. So anyways, yeah, I hope you all have an amazing weekend though. And I will talk to you again on Monday for my July budget and honestly July is really exciting <laughs> like really really exciting and I know I'm hyping it up and like I feel like it's not click I'm not putting it in the title or anything so it's not clickbait and I I'm just like super excited for July because July is my very first three paycheck month for my new job so technically in July I'll be making close to six thousand dollars for the month and you won't actually see that because of the way I'm setting up for July but anyways you guys will see that on Monday <laughs> Uh, anyways, I hope you all have an amazing couple days again, and I will talk to you again on Monday. Bye, everyone.